Today, folks, thanks to Yahoo Stock Screener, I analyzed the highest yield, largest cap companies in Canada that are yielding over 5%, those juicy dividends. And dividends basically changed my perspective on investing. I mean, when you wake up to the reality that you can own all the companies that you utilize every day to the point where they're paying for that utility or that product, that service, like think about your, your phone bill. It's probably like the easiest example. You're paying $50 a month. How much do you have to own of the phone company to basically pay that bill in perpetuity for the rest of your life. And it's not typically as much money as you'd think. Most people think you need like millions of dollars to reach retirement. And though that might be the case and it might take 20, 30 years, the fact is, is $10,000, $20,000 can completely change your perspective on the bills you have to pay. And we're gonna be talking about that because these stocks range anywhere from the financial sector, insurance, the telecom and energy sectors. They seem to be the most prudent for these higher yields, but let's just get right into this. I'm primarily somebody today that focuses more on ETFs that combine these kind of stocks, but it's still relatively fascinating to see these mega cap companies paying such huge dividends. And probably at the top of the list, we're gonna start off with the financial sector kicking it off with Bank of Nova Scotia, yielding currently 6.05%. The stock has obviously fallen off a cliff thanks to this kind of tumultuous market that we're currently experiencing. And when you take a look at the dividend growth here, it is pretty astounding to say the least. I mean, you go back to 2005, this thing was paying 30 cents a share. Today, it's paying a dollar. So not only does this thing pay 6% right now, but historically it does increase the dividend. And you know, it's done a really good job at that as well. But CM, Canadian Imperial Bank, another one here paying 5.6%. Uh, BNS, Canadian Imperial Bank are the highest yielding Canadian banks in this current moment. And they historically are. Uh, they're just kind of the smaller banks in comparison to Royal Bank or Toronto Dominion Bank. And taking a look at this one, another crazy dividend increaser from 2000. I'm trying to show you the long charts on these companies to give you the long-term perspective on investing. I find most people, they just kind of look at the short term, they see these high yields and they just chase that. But I want you to always take into perspective the long history because these companies go all the way back for like 50 plus years, right? So we can see in 2000, uh, Canadian Imperial Bank was paying 30 cents all the way up till about 2022 and they were paying a dollar 61. You know how insane that is? That like if you've been holding on to this for the last 20 years, your payouts are just absurd. And then they obviously did a reverse split. So they didn't cut the dividend here. They just uh, shrunk down some of the shares. But nonetheless, let's get into this with Power Corporation, the company that actually owns Wealth Simple. I mean, it's kind of incredible, but obviously like the financial sector when it comes to investments and asset management, they've been getting a little bit hindered in the market because obviously people are t you know hindered on spending in this inflationary interest raising environment so it's no surprise that you know companies like this are getting hit a little harder through a wealth management standpoint but it's actually recovered quite nicely i mean it's only down about 14 percent from the all-time highs i mean we're seeing it paying a 5.35 percent yield and this one as well has been very stabilized at the dividend payments you can go back to the 2010 period it was paying 29 cents today we're getting around 50 cents so well over a doubling of the dividend in the, the last decade really nice to see so let's pivot into the uh, insurance aspect of things. Car insurance for me, very happy. My car insurance is now down to like, I think I'm down to like $90 a month. It's it's taken me so long. Insurance is like one of the biggest rips for younger people. It's like when you're in your early 20s, the whole world just wants to hold you back. I understand why most young people have accidents, not, a much, not enough driving experience. But taking a look at manual life, this is probably one of the kings of dividend increases. Now the long history of this chart, yeah, we're not getting any real stock growth. So it's probably more prudent to buy this thing when it's on certain dips, but paying a 5.47% dividend yield. And look at the history of this sucker, man. Now, I don't know if there was reverse splits or what the hell is going on in the past but if we just take a look at the last decade say from 2010 it was paying 13 cents a share and today it's paying 37 cents a share like a tripling of the dividend super awesome to see taking a look at another insurance company great west life co uh this one much better performance uh, not in the last i mean 10 years but it still looks a little bit more healthier from a, a stock like just the stock chart perspective than perhaps manual life if we're talking about capital growth but with a 5.75 percent dividend Let's go back to 2010 here where it was paying 31 cents. Is it as good as Manny Life? Yeah, particularly. It's only up to 52 cents a quarter. So we're not talking about a doubling like we've seen uh, with Manny Life over the last decade. But moving on, let's get into the telecom sector. By far, my favorite sector. Um, you know, let's say you watch, what are your favorite shows right now? I can't get over that Bell owns Crave. If you're into zombie flicks, The Last of Us, you can actually make money off those shows by owning Bell because they provide that service, obviously along with internet, phone, all kinds of stuff. Very diversified. Uh, our telecom giants here in Canada are actually really diversified to some degree. This thing's paying a whopping 6.4%. It's got actually pretty good stock growth in comparison to some of the US telecom providers like AT&T. 
huge company, $55 billion. I mean, think about this. You put 10 grand, every 10 grand in here, you're getting $640 in annual dividends. So if your phone bill is 40 to $50 a month, this thing's gonna pay it for you with just 10 grand. You know how crazy that is to have your phone bill paid for in perpetuity for the rest of your life with a measly 10,000. I know 10,000 is a lot of money, but think about that trade off. You work for 10 grand, never have to pay for a phone bill again. Super awesome uh, perspective. But take a look at this from 2010, it was paying about 41 cents. Today it's paying 97 cents. So this one's also over doubled the dividend. So, you know, if your phone bill goes up, you're gonna get you're gonna get that paid for through the dividend increase. It's really cool. But my favorite telecom provider by far, I talk about this a lot, is Telus because this is probably the most diversified telecom giant. Uh, yesterday, Rogers went down. It was really frustrating for like four hours. I always find Rogers is to be the most frustrating from like a, from actually like staying stable. Caused huge drama last year. We ended up having to go to Whole Foods to use their internet because Rogers went down for like a few days. But Telus, you know, Bell, they seem to be pretty stable. Some of the better providers. And Telus here gives you exposure to the healthcare sector because they have a telehealth business. They have a security business. Obviously, Wi-Fi, um, sell your services. They do so much and with a starting yield to 5.21% and probably one of the best stock charts of all the telecom giants. I really like Telus a lot, but we can take a look. This one also been doing some splits and stuff like that. So we can see a change uh, in the dividend payout, but they never cut the dividend, which is really nice. So if we go back to, so it's hard to kind of get gauge this out without taking into consideration some of the stock splits, but take a look at this uh, from an easy chart here from maybe what, 2013, it was paying 34 cents to 2020 paying 58 cents. This one historically over a decade is doubling the dividend more than that. Really awesome telecom provider. So let's talk about energy. Um, energy is a huge proponent of Canada's economy. Actually, the two biggest proponents I think have to be natural resources, uh, you know, gold, silver, uranium, lithium. We're one of like the largest countries on the planet when it comes to just natural resources. And obviously oil and energy is one of those. So Enbridge is the largest pipeline, um, you know, oil company. They also deal with uh, natural gas providing. If you have like a natural gas stove at home, you live in Toronto, there's a good chance you're using Enbridge for that. So it's a utility. It's a, a pipeline company with literal oil pipelines going from like Alberta all the way down to Texas. And this one doesn't offer a lot of performance from the stock perspective of it. And a lot of people have issues with this one because of the debt that they currently have. The thing is, is I don't think oil is going anywhere anytime soon, to say the least, but we're talking about a 6.88 percent dividend yield in a company that has actually done a fabulous job over the last decade at raising that dividend. I don't know what the break was in 2012. If they cut the dividend, you might want to do some history to see what happened in the past. But in the last decade, I mean, it went from 32 cents all the way up to 89 cents. That's pretty astounding. I mean, that's tripling of the dividend, right? Taking a look at Pambina Pipeline, another pipeline company here uh, with a 5.59 percent dividend yield, a little healthier stock chart. I mean, it's still relatively flat probably more in similar line with Enbridge, but lately it looks like the performance has been a little higher. But taking a look, Pambina, uh, this one's got a long history of really stable dividend growth. So we go back to 2010, paying 13 cents, today paying 22 cents. So not nearly as fast as Enbridge, but again, very stable company. So let's take a look at uh, TC Pipelines. You'll notice there's a trend here in Canada with these higher yielding uh, you know, mega cap dividend stocks that pay over 5% and, you know, they seem to be pipelines. But taking a look, this one pays 6.68%, a much more stable performance over the last decade in comparison to the last two pipeline companies. And from a dividend standpoint, let's see if it's as good as Enbridge going back to 2010, paying 38 cents to today where it's paying about 60, 70 cents. I'm not sure. I think this might be the US dollar version. So we want to look up the Canadian version because there's, uh, you know, dollar value exchange. So, you know, obviously on the conversion, Canadian dollar fluctuates against the US dollar. So we need to look at the Canadian dollar version of this. So let's go back to the history here. And uh, yeah, this is why we were looking at the US history because for some reason, uh, the Canadian history doesn't go far enough back, but we can see since 2019, 75 cents to 93 cents, just in the last you know four or five years is pretty good growth nonetheless, right? And then finally, we've got Amera. Uh, Amera guys, another oil energy company here paying 5.11%. And this is one of the smaller caps at 14.6 billion. Take a look at the max chart here, much more stabilized performance than all of the energy stocks we just looked at. And taking a look at the dividend history here, I mean, we're talking about going from 27 cents all the way up to 69 cents. 
So energy has got a really good proponent of growth. Now you'll notice I didn't include a lot of companies. Now, firstly, if I had to pick my favorites here, obviously TELUS, uh, Bank of Nova Scotia, Canadian Imperial Bank, but there's so many things I didn't include from the real estate sector to the utility sector. And that's because, you know, the Canadian REITs are too small cap. They don't fit in the large and mega cap sector of Canada, but you can get five, six plus percent yields in the REIT sector. And obviously I'm not somebody that's hyper focused on super high yields because I want stability in my portfolio. And you can go look at things like in the utility sector, like Hydro One, which is absolutely amazing. Ford is absolutely amazing, all yielding over 4%. But again, I just wanted to take this video, focus on what Canada had to offer from mega cap companies that were yielding over 5%. And I'll pass the question off to you. Of these, what's your favorites? I'd love to know in that comment section below.